All right, time to review the White Arc from LK Chen. This is another Jen from the Han Dynasty, early Han Dynasty, 220 to around 100 BC. The Han Dynasty continued for another 320 years after that, by the way, it's contemporary with the Roman Empire. This is quite a long sword, although not a long sword, if you get my drift. This is overall quite a minimalist design. If you take a look at the hilt here, it's a fairly simple bronze handguard. And yes, you would still call it a guard, even if it doesn't protect the hand from the opponent's blade, it still protects your fingers from your own blade. It prevents them from slipping up. I'm just pointing that out because that came up in a comment. And it's got a bronze pommel cap and a simple cord wrap. Otherwise, the blade is far from simple though. Pattern welded from 1065 high carbon steel and T8 tool steel, which is an alloy of tungsten, cobalt, chromium, and vanadium. It's got a diamond cross section and it's an incredibly thin blade. It's thicker at the guard and then it has a distal taper toward the point and it becomes <laughs> almost non-existent near the point. Very, very thin. And hence, it's extremely light and well balanced. The balance is right here. And you can tell that's a long blade. So the length gives it a certain blade presence, but the light weight makes it extremely agile. You can easily perform wrist powered cuts with this. You can come around pretty quickly for a cut and uh, it just handles really well. This is a cut and thrust blade, so it's designed for both cutting and thrusting in mind. For thrust, you can really feel immediately that it will be very effective. And in fact, even somebody who has not received any formal training in Chinese swordsmanship, I can really, I can really tell how this is supposed to be used. You know, it's not the European rapier disengage where you dip the point under, you pivot it in a different spot. And this sword is so well balanced that you can just intuitively feel that. And you can do that without really, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm horrible at it still either way, but just on an intuitive level, you can just, you can just feel it. Of course, me being a Western barbarian, I want to use it like a long sword and the handle is just long enough to be able to do that. If you have larger hands, you can probably only do that by putting a finger over the guard, which is fine because I said the guard isn't there to protect your hand from the opponent's blade anyway. This is used differently. So yeah, you can absolutely use this like a long sword. I think it's meant to be used with one hand, but it could also be a case of a hand and a half sword where you're able to use it with one hand, but can use another hand for extra control and power. Very comfortable handle, by the way. The cord wrap is simple, but it's really all you need. Feels really good in the hand. Gives you nice positive grip. It's well shaped. The cross section makes you able to get a feel for the edge alignment without any problem. And uh, yeah, it just, it works really well. The grip is attached with two pins, which you can't see because they're under the wrap. And then the bronze pommel cap is glued on. So it seems very solid. From the tests I've done, the, the hill construction is definitely not a problem. So I did tatami cutting, of course, as usual, which worked really well, especially the first time I tried it out. The very first cut, I was extremely impressed by how smooth and easy it was. And the other cuts on that day also really clean, smooth, satisfying. Uh, the edge is very good. The blade geometry is excellent. It tapers gradually from the center of the blade to the edge. And it's a single smooth bevel aside from the micro bevel at the edge. So that gives it very little resistance as it glides to the target. So that's great to use. On one day, I didn't do as well because it was just an off day, but still you can tell even when the edge alignment is off, which you can see in the slow-mo footage by how much flex is, it still cuts very well. It's definitely a for forgiving 
sword. There was one spectacularly botched cut where it completely changed the edge alignment in the middle of it and just kind of went weirdly vertically almost. So that put a lot of stress on the blade. It made it flex very strongly. So the temper of this is quite impressive. It's tempered to 55 to 58 HRC. And this blade you can flex pretty far with how thin it is. You can, of course, flex it easily and it'll return to true. I did manage to bend it. I don't know at what point exactly. I did some cutting on wooden branches, nothing crazy, nothing overly thick. Um, it could have happened there or maybe it was this one really bad botch cut on the tatami mat. I'm not sure really, but you can just about see, I'm trying to show it here, that there's a bit of a set in the blade. So that's the risk with an extremely thin blade like this. It makes it very, very light. It makes it an excellent cutter. But if, if you're dealing with hard targets, if there's anything that it could get stuck in and then twist, things like that, it's pretty likely to to bend take a set i tried to fix it but i wasn't able to permanently bend it back and i was really worried when i was doing it. i was pretty gentle with it because i mean this is this is just look at how thin this is so i was really worried that i would just snap it off outright with how good the steel is you probably don't have to worry too much but the blade is so thin that you you really have to be careful i would not recommend this for hard cutting a bamboo is fine. In fact, here's a video of some bamboo cutting and you can get more of an idea of how the body mechanics are in Chinese swordsmanship. It's quite a bit different from the way I move and that's good to see. So here in particular, you can see a demonstration just to give you an idea of how these are used. Even though my European longsword techniques work perfectly well for cutting, I do pervert it, so to speak. At least I use it quite a bit differently. This is not the kind of sword that you're going to want to try to cut through bone or, you know, hew through an arm, things like that. Uh, this, is, this is really more for precise cuts to vulnerable targets like the neck or tendons in the arm, soft tissue, things like that. For that, this would perform really well. And of course, thrusts. The edge retention is excellent, by the way. After all the cutting I did, this is where we're at. Up here, where I mostly cut with it, it's not quite as keen anymore. It tears the paper just slightly, but it's still perfectly sharp. Further down here, where I didn't use it in, in the cutting, this is still the original sharpness, and that is very impressive. The scabbard is interesting. It's made of two thin pieces of wood, then covered with linen, and multiple layers of lacquer were applied. So this is a long, arduous process, and it makes a scabbard that is solid, but very light. So everything here is designed with light weight and speed in mind. So this wouldn't encumber you very much uh, wearing it, fighting with it. By the way, this is the kind of armor that was used at the time. Now, obviously with a sword like this, you're not gonna be able to cut through it, but you can absolutely go for the gaps. Uh, this armor here in particular doesn't cover everything perfectly. There are fairly large uncovered areas. The other one, still you have the neck uh, exposed as a potential target, the face, the arms. So that's where, where this could still be used. And uh, it could probably also find the gaps under the arms, you know, armpit thrusts, things like that. So yeah, definitely an interesting sword design. Very different from most other swords that I've handled so far uh, because it's so long yet it's this light so that makes it unique. As far as the build quality is concerned the fit seems very good and nothing has loosened up from the testing. Seems very solid overall. Definitely high quality steel. Really the only thing that worries me is just how thin the blade is. And if the original is this thin, then it's just what it is. I haven't seen it in person. I mean, I've, I've seen pictures, but you can't tell the thickness. So I don't know how close 
this is to the original, but I'm just gonna assume, considering how much research they put into it, that they kept the blade very close to the original find. So if that's how it is, then that's what you, what you got. You can't fault this reproduction for it. Let's put it that way. And for the price, 385 US dollars, I think that's very reasonable for the quality you're getting here. So I would definitely highly recommend it. It's a really nice sword. So I'll, as usual, I'll post the link in the description down below. Check it out. Hope you found the review helpful and thanks for watching.